So what do, what do you make of this? You know, you've, you've got the vote. Nancy Pelosi said that she thinks that the president was irritated by the <laughs> vote, 354 <laughs> to 60 in the House, against his move in Syria. Uh -huh. Well, I think what's surprising is, you know, you remember how the Democrats were so opposed to the Iraq war and they hated George Bush mm -hmm. because of the Iraq war. They thought it was a quagmire. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of Americans now believe that. Do you think the Syrian war is going to be any less of a quagmire than the Iraq war? It's much messier with it being very unclear which side we should be on. Turkey is an ally. The Free Syrian Army used to be an ally. They're now allied with the, with the Turks. You've got the Kurds on the other side. So I think that the president made the wise decision. I think he made a wise decision. And when the Turks said, we are coming in one way or another, we're going to be sending tens of thousands of troops in, for a president to say 50 troops are going to stand there, that would have been malpractice. That would have been legislative or commander-in-chief malpractice. Mm -hmm. So I think the president did the wise things in, in moving the, the 50 troops, which are not a deterrent to anything, out of the way. Here's Lindsey Graham. Uh, you know that he's very fired up about this. He usually lines up with the president on most things, but not on this. Here he is. The problem with President Trump, he talks like Ronald Reagan and he acts like Rand Paul on occasion. He's got a chance to change this. I would urge him to do so. It's not about me wanting to stay in Syria forever. It's about me wanting to make sure that ISIS does not reemerge. So he's saying, you know, he doesn't want to see <laughs> the day when you've got <laughs> people being beheaded on the beaches again and the black flags well, flying because of this move. What do you say? Uh, Lindsey Graham's been wrong about every foreign policy decision of the last several decades. He was for the Iraq war that destabilized the Middle East and made Iran stronger and allowed more terrorism to develop. He was for the Libyan war. Once again, you got chaos and more terrorism. But if you want to know who's acting like Ronald Reagan, it's Donald Trump. When we had the Marines killed in the, bar the barracks in Beirut in the early 1980s, Ronald Reagan looked at the situation and said, you know, what are we going to do? Send hundreds of thousands of troops in there to solve the civil war in Libya and Lebanon? Or is it maybe not an American's interest? And Ronald Reagan brought the troops home. So I think people confuse Ronald Reagan's legacy. A lot of these neocons hated Ronald Reagan for his ability to talk to the Soviet Union also and have arms control agreements. So I think the Ronald Reagan they remember uh, is not exactly the Ronald Reagan of history. Well, I, I, let me put up uh, Susan Rice here because, you know, I think it's an interesting comparison to take a look at how Democrats felt when President Obama decided that it was time to leave Iraq. Uh, she was the Secretary of State. She said this is among the most dishonest, craven statements ever from Trump to justify his total sellout of ISIS, Putin, Assad and Erdogan. We need to find out why. What did Trump get in exchange for sacrificing our national security? And we should point out that was a retweet of uh, reporter well, Jennifer Griffin's uh, <laughs> quote about the PKK. Go ahead. It's, 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 it's true. It's truly Trump derangement syndrome. So when President Obama finally got us out of the Iraq war, which I was for, tens of thousands of troops were removed. It was a significant end to the war and I was for it. But the thing is, President Trump moved 50 soldiers around and they're condemning him with a resolution. The Republicans who voted for this should be ashamed. It's ridiculous. They're voting to condemn their own president for moving 50 soldiers around. Most of these are Republicans who say, well, Article 2 of the Constitution gives the president unlimited authority to wage war. They're not even letting the president move 50 soldiers around. These people are really, really, they ought to be ashamed for treating the, their guess, own president you know, the this way. That, I think the president did something very wise. I, I understand that you, you totally agree um, with this move, you know, but, but, but the concern is that those 50 we're holding in place the security barrier between these two countries and that, it, you um, know, that the way that we pulled out of there was very abrupt and that if it had been, been managed uh, differently, right. we may have not seen the kinds of casualties that we're seeing. Um, we, you know, right. what, what is the good reason for that in your mind? The, the, well, the, the only deterrent they were is as long as Turkey agreed that they were a deterrent. When Turkey, when the Turkish leader called the president a week or so ago and said, the troops are coming in, the president had no choice but to remove those 50 soldiers. 50 soldiers deter nothing. I'm of the belief when you go to war, you go to war. You go big or you go home. You do, you do not go to war with 50 soldiers. And if you want to be at war in Syria, if all the war caucus wants to go over there, let's vote on it in Congress. Let's vote for a declaration of war. Who are they going to declare war against? They don't even know who they want to fight. It's a really messy situation. But I will say the irony of this is 
I think the Kurds have a pretty good chance of being protected by Assad, mm -hmm. and I think there's at least a reasonable chance that the Kurds could get in a semi-autonomous region in Syria the same way the Kurds got one in Iraq if they will cooperate with, uh, with Assad and if Assad can convince Erdogan that the border is secure. Well, I mean, we it's very interesting this piece that, that because the, no one's been... I, 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 sorry to interrupt. The, you know, that the general who oversees the Kurds basically made that calculation pretty quickly. You know, he said, if the United States is out of the, out of the game here, I'm going to go with, with Assad and hope that we can maybe carve out, as you say, th this, uh, this position.